So if you follow a lot of real estate social media accounts, you know that there's a lot of buyers that when they are at the closing table, they get to take a photo with the giant key or the keys in front of the new house or the big frame that the title company has saying congratulations. But one thing to think about, what about the sellers? That's a celebratory event as well. I'm Katie the Real Estate Gal in Denver Metro Colorado and I'm going to be covering some of the things that a seller can expect during closing and also celebrate because it's a big deal that you're selling a house. So before closing day there are six things that I want the seller to kind of have in the back of their mind of things to think about while you're prepping and moving out. Now moving can be really distracting at least it is for me. I'm in the middle of moving right now and I'm getting so distracted by what goes in what box and labeling and making sure that all of the baking things are in this box and all the sports activities are in that, it can be hectic. So it's nice to have a list. So I have a list of six items to think about before you head to the closing table. The first thing is homeowner's insurance. Don't cancel homeowner's insurance early or even the day of. Schedule it to end three to five days afterwards just to make sure there's a cushion. Sometimes buyers can do something stupid such as make a large purchase while they're under contract and then their loan might be uh, or their, their loan might fall through because their lender sees a really large purchase and they're like, you know, you're not a trustworthy person. We're not going to approve this loan anymore. So making sure that homeowner's insurance is still active a couple days after closing is an important thing because gosh forbid that something happens within you know the, the little bit of a gap if you cancel a couple days early you just want to make sure that you're covered and that rolls into number two is utilities also don't have utilities end early because just in case the transaction falls through you might be without water or heat or electricity or, or whatnot so also schedule that a couple days after now, the third thing is, and it's just kind of a nice thing to do, is to hire professional cleaners. There's some really affordable professional cleaners. I'm in the Denver metro area, happy to provide a, uh, a couple for your reference, but to have professional cleaners come through, like these, the new people that are moving in, it might not be a new home, but it should feel like one. It's going to be you know, where they are planting their roots and where they're gonna be you know, living for the next who knows how many, years or months or decades even. <laughs> so to have a clean house is just kind of a nice gesture to show, you know, welcome home. Thank you for, you know, all your work during the transaction. Thank you for buying my home. So that's just something to kind of consider and think about is to have professional cleaners come through. The fourth thing is as a seller, you're going to be receiving the closing disclosure. That's a breakdown of all the costs. What we don't want to happen is to have the you as a seller or a buyer show up at the closing table and say, wait, what's this cost? I didn't agree to this and have potentially a dispute and that might even delay closing. So you're going to receive those documents ahead of time that you can review to make sure that everything looks great. The fifth thing is where do you want the funds to be sent? If the buyer is paying you and you're receiving funds, do you want those funds in a check form? Now keep in mind, the bank will put a hold on the check for about five-ish days to make sure that it clears so you won't have those funds immediately. Or do you want them wired? Wiring is a very popular option because those funds are available immediately. So something to think about of how you want to receive those. And then you can reach out to your bank ahead of time and get all of the information that you need so that you have your, you know, your routing numbers and um, you're just all good to go there. And then the sixth thing that will happen ahead of time, just something to keep in mind is where will you be signing? Are you gonna be going into a physical location? Typically held, the closings are typically held at a title company. Are you gonna be going into that location or are you wanting a notary to meet you? So I had a family that wanted a notary to come to their home because they have two little kiddos and they didn't want to you know, load them up in the car, drive to the title company, potentially have temper tantrums. So they had a notary come out to them so that they could sign in the comfort of their own home. Now I've also had where the client was out of state and so the title company found a notary in that state that could meet them so that they could sign the documents. So are you going to a physical location? Or are you having uh, kind of a remote closing, if you will, or a virtual closing? And 
it's just kind of, it's out of convenience. And it is more popular these days too because of the social distancing and just, I mean, convenience, honestly. So many people are working from home now instead of going to the office, same kind of thing. So those are six, six things that a seller can anticipate before the closing. Now at the closing, let's say they're going into a physical location, you can anticipate about 15 to 20 minutes for the closing on the sell side. If you are on the buy side, you can anticipate between 30 and 45 minutes. Now these timeframes are always flexible because, or just it's dependent on if you're asking a ton of questions or not. And so just kind of keep that in mind, but that's just kind of something to expect. The, uh, something that you do want to bring with you, two forms of identification, you do need to verify that it's you, sell side and buy side. So a passport and a driver's license work perfectly. You should be getting a list of approved documentation that um, the title company will accept prior to the closing, so then you can be prepared for that. Now, after the closing, after the papers are signed, the keys are handed over as the seller, you can call your insurance company, cancel your homeowner's insurance. You can call and cancel the utilities. There's no need to pay for the new buyer's utilities of water or electricity. Now the title company might have helped with the switchover for some of these services, but if you're responsible for them, you can call and cancel because you're not the homeowner anymore. And then the uh, third thing that you want to do is the all of the documents that you're receiving that you've just signed, you can receive those in electronic form or you can receive them in paper form. Now, put those in a safe place because when you go to file your taxes in this year, your tax person, or if you do it yourself, you are going to need those numbers. So make sure you know where those documents are located. So I did want to talk about the very last thing, the difference between a closing and a settlement. So a closing is the act of going on closing day. On the very last day, you're gonna be a homeowner, at least for that home, and you're signing the papers, you're at the title company doing your thing. That is the closing. Now the settlement is when everything has been funded and recorded. So there are two different things. Depending on what state you're in, they could be done on the same day, but sometimes they're on different days. But those were just the two differences between a closing and a settlement. So I'm Katie, the real estate gal in Denver Metro, Colorado. I am a licensed real estate agent. Be more than happy to help you sell your house or help on the buy side, chat about market updates. I would love your feedback on this video and I do have a nice selection of other videos that I've recorded to help with the buy process as well as the selling process. So please subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and please reach out to me if you have any needs, even if you're in a different state. I have a lot of connections and I'm more than happy to help connect you with the right agent for you. Thanks so much for watching.